All right, Hess J. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? All right, all right. All right, we've got Miss Coco. She's going to be coming in in a couple of minutes. She did make the uh, Fusco Ofki, the, uh, the, um, the grape dumplings. So uh, she's uh, bringing in a bowl. It was really good. <laughs> um, and um, you guys can ask her questions when she comes in and talks about it. But it's one of the, uh, the meals that uh, I always knew as native. Um, I would only get to, to partake of that kind of food when we came back east part of Oklahoma. Otherwise, a lot of people don't know how to make it. I don't know how to make it. So if you guys have any questions, I would just um, direct you to Coco because she made it. <laughs> All right, before she gets in here, let's just go over a couple of things. All right, let's do, um, I know this is, seems like a lot of repetition, but that's how we're gonna learn. Let me go ahead and see if I can share the screen. There we go. All right, so let's do, some two letter syllables while we're waiting on Miss Coco. Oh, there she is. <laughs> Let me go ahead and do the two letter syllables and then three letter syllables, and then we'll have Miss Coco talk. All right. So let's go ahead and go with. Uh, I'm going to do three. You guys put your mute, uh, your mics on mute, and then repeat after me. The first one is Tha. Te, ti, te, do, tu, ta. The next line is sa, se, si, se, so, su, sa. The third line is ta, te, ti, te, do, tu, ta. All right, I got a couple of people on chat. Let's see what they have to say. All right, Miss J. And somebody forgot the recipe, but like I said, you can ask Miss Coco the <laughs> recipe when she gets up here. And let's go ahead and do the three letter syllables right now. Let's choose. Okay. Just choose three of them. Like I said, mute your mic and then go ahead and repeat after me. Boss, bis, bees, base. Bus, bus, bus. Jazz, chess, cheese, chase, chose, choose, just. Spa, spe, 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 spo, spo, spa. All right. Anybody have any questions? You guys getting that down pretty good? I know I have the um uh the audio files in the uh, Google Drive. So if you guys forget how things sound, it should be on the Google Drive. All right, let me go ahead and uh, have Ms. Coco take it away and she can tell you what she made. And um, if you guys have any questions, just uh, you know, unmute your mic and give her a quick question or you can write it in chat. Ms. Coco um, it's a pleasure to be here and for Desiree to ask me to come in. Uh, I've been sitting in with her with a few classes. Um, and I said today I would make some of my grape dumplings, but go off and bring it. Well, I did. <laughs> and this is it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, Plus of this. Put this up here. This is what it looks like. And uh, it's uh, my recipe. I'm old school. I don't measure nothing. <laughs> I uh, I would say I probably use maybe four cups of all-purpose flour. But before I start, I have my pot on the stove heating up. And I buy the large Welch's grape juice. Uh, I think it's five something a bottle. I, I used this morning, I used one and a half bottles of the Welch's grape juice. 
excuse me, and I let that get hot. And um, then I add about a half a cup of sugar to it. I guess if you're diabetic, you could add the um, other kind of sugar. But that's what I added. And then I, when it gets to steaming, I turn it down a little bit. Then I get my all-purpose flour and about four cups, six cups. Um, and this morning I used, um, I think I used a whole uh, jar bottle of the Welch's grape juice to mix it up. I just stir it up until it's all blue. Then I, um, I have a little big old long, looks like a pizza plate. I put flour on that, my all-purpose flour. Then I just scoop out my dough, put it on the flour. Then I knead it. I just knead it till it's, uh, the texture is, you know, I don't want it to get real hard, but uh, where it's mixed up real good and you can flatten it out. So I just pinch, I usually have a big old blob, I guess you could say, of dough. I pinch off maybe a couple of hands full. I patty it out. And uh, this morning I tried to make them look pretty because I knew I was going to show it to y'all. <laughs> so I patted it out and I, uh, I used a pizza cutter to just cut it in long strips and squares. Usually when I get lazy and I don't feel like doing all that, I just pinch it off of my dough, patty it out in my hand and throw it in my grape juice. And uh, you don't want to let it get real high and boil too fast. Um, so really that's, you know, that's my recipe for buffalo afki. And um, some people don't care for it because they, I don't know, they just don't like grape dumplings. But um, today, uh, our manager brought chicken and dumplings. Then I brought grape dumplings. So um, one of our staff called it D-Day today because it was dumplings. <laughs> we didn't have anything else to go with it. We just had dumplings. So anyway. Um, How long do you let summer? Uh, you just let the, let the juice simmer till it's steaming. And... When it's steaming, that's that's when it's going to boil your dumplings real good. But you don't, after it starts simmering, you need to turn it down a little bit. But, uh, you know, anybody have any questions? I know there was somebody on here that said they had a recipe for it. I'd like to know what your, Christy, I'd like to know what your recipe is. <laughs> oh. Can you read it to me? God. Yes, I can. Hang on, let me mute my TV. Uh, <laughs> all right, this is allegedly from my grandma Tilly, who was who was half blood, and she was my great grandma. And okay. this is two cups of flour, and then two teaspoons of baking powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon plus a bit, uh, and a quarter of a cup of sugar. So a quarter plus a tablespoon. It's very specific. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then uh, a third a cup of butter, and then three quarters a cup of milk, four cups of grape juice, four cups of wild grapes seeded. Conquered grapes may be substituted. And then um, sift together the flour, the dry ingredients. With a pastry blender, work in the butter, and then stir in the milk to make a dough. So you essentially you get a dough. And it sounds like it just depends on the person as to how the dough comes out. It may be like bread dough, you know, right. and, uh, and then roll the dough out exactly like you said it. It looks like the preparation's the same. Roll out the dough, lightly floured board, cut into two inch squares, heat the grape juice. Uh, you were real specific about the grape juice, though. I like that because I didn't know enough about that. And, uh, so you heat the grape juice, grapes, remaining sugar in the kettle until boiling, drop in the dumplings. Cover closely and steam for 15 minutes or until tender, serve hot. Right. <laughs> I can that, type that out if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that sounds good. Um, there's a lot of ingredients to that one that you have. and uh, But I'm sure it's delicious because it was an elder that had that recipe. So, you know, it had yeah. to be 
delicious. <laughs> yeah, it came from my, my actually my great aunt Nancy. She passed that on to us and I assume it came from her mother. Uh-huh. So yeah, <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for sharing that. And yeah. uh, thank you for sharing yours too. I think that's awesome. I, I mean, I heard how, how to make it, the hands-on and I, I don't have that. I just have a recipe is all. And uh-huh. You can make you can mess it up easily if you don't know how to put it together. <laughs> Have you made them, Christy? No, I've never had the courage to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll <gonna> try now. <laughs> well, you could probably just cut that recipe in half and just try it to see yeah. how it out. And I I'm guess sure it will. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Thank you, Miss Coco. Well, you're welcome, it. Christy. Thank you for the recipe. Okay. And anybody have any other questions? Um, because if not, I'll turn this back over to Desiree. I just wanted to, she just wanted me to show you what it looks like. And a lot of you probably already know anyway, but um, I wish you could taste it. <laughs> but like I said, some people don't care for the grape dumplings. I said dumplings aren't supposed to be sweet and they're not supposed to be blue, And but it's good. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'll turn it back over to Desiree. All right, thank you, Ms. Coco. All right, so we had dumpling day, like she said, we had uh, a dough for teaching, all right. Um, we had the grape dumplings and we had chicken and dumplings. So like one of the coworkers said, it was D-Day, dumpling day. So we were all nice and, and full. All right, did anybody have any questions about the one, uh, the two or the three uh, letter syllables and sounds? All right, let's see. We did the vocabulary, and like I said, the vocabularies are are going to to go into our words. Let's go ahead and sing our song and get this going. I've been working with uh, with um, PowerPoint, so I'm trying to make it easy so we can sing and hear at the same time. Hear somebody singing. Yes. <laughs> All right, okay, good job. Is that was everybody able to hear that? I know somebody said that that they couldn't hear that um, coming over the, the sound. Is everybody able to hear that? Yeah, monks, Mahaya. There was at least here in Florida, there was a challenge, but okay. I sing it because I love the song and I know it. But <laughs> it sounds like. But thank you so much for working on that. I I know it's such a beautiful song and. So important. Hey, Amy, Amy, I'd like to ask you something. Did you receive your CDs? I did. I did. I did. Yes. Thank you. And I haven't gotten a chance to listen to them, but I, I um, was just looking at them just before class. So I'm going to listen to them today. And okay. thank you. I'm sure. so excited. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I don't see any problem um, with the connection here. The mute is not on. Um, I know Ms. Coco and I can hear it and I see people um, are not able to hear it or it's an intermittent. So I'm not sure what happened. Um, everything looks fine here. It might be the internet connection. I know sometimes, you know, the internet connection for the whole complex is, you know, gets kind of a little cranky. Right. Mahaya, 
Um, got off her CDs too. All right, Christy, I'm glad you received yours also. All right, Austin, go ahead. Yeah, um, are you playing the the audio in the room? Is that um, how it's going through, or it's on the uh, slide that I just that we just looked at? It's in yeah. a PowerPoint, and you know when you hit a PowerPoint, it plays. It's playing as soon as I hit it. Um, I think the other day it was working fine. I didn't have any anybody say that it wasn't. So I'm thinking it might be the internet connection. I know we've got storms in the area and a lot of clouding. So sometimes the internet, it puts through the visual, but sometimes you can't hear it um, just to get through what it can. So I, I think that might be the issue. Okay, because it, it could also be uh, a noise suppression uh issue on zoom side so that could be another issue okay i'll look at that i know zoom um and all the other apps update sometimes without without uh, us doing anything so it might be something on their end yeah because that's what it sounded like i could hear it at the start but it gradually uh started to get phased out and so it seems like it could be on zoom side okay this is automatically just noise suppression yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, it, it might be. I will look at that after our class. And um, but I know the other day it seemed like it was working. Okay, somebody said there was an update yesterday. All right. So I'll look at that after class. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. We don't know some of these things until you guys let us know. Sometimes we think we're doing good and you can't hear us. <laughs> so, all right. Let's see. And this also is on the Google Drive. Um, so whenever you get a chance, you can go onto the Google Drive and you can hit the slideshow and it should automatically play. So you can hear it and practice with that as well. And then we um, were looking at our kitchen items. Let me go ahead and I did um, work with the, the uh, PowerPoints. Let me um, put this on and let me know if you can hear this one. Let me go ahead and start the slideshow. And if you can hear the words, repeat after the words and just get a little practice in. I just wanna make sure that our, our sound is going. Tamla Azadichka Siskira Islamka Halo Balapna Siskira Imbaraga Hidodi Hudi Opuska Ispanska Oh Legida Oh Umbeda Jadohaya. All right, Mado. Did everybody hear that okay? Did anybody have a problem with that one? No? Okay. All right. It might have just been that the first one, the uh the Muskogee song, but I'm not sure. Like I said, we've got storms in the area, so it could be a, a lot of different things going on here. And let's go ahead and go over our uh, our Muskogee foods. Like I said, I've been uh, working with Miss Coco, and she's been able to to voice the uh, the uh, native speaker of of our uh, Muskogee words. And I practice too, so I practice with these as well. Um, and then I sing in the morning, you know, to some of our Muscogee hymns, just to wake myself up and, and get me started in the morning. Okay, go ahead. Oh, Safki. Safki. Abaski. Abaski Nika. Pasko Afki. Duck Lake Sakmurki Sakonipki Jadahaga Dalpambuji. All right, everybody able to hear that one? 
All right, all right, Mado. Okay, so these are, like I said, our, our words. This is what I was telling you guys about on our Monday class. I, I wasn't able to put it, or I thought I put it on there. Um, these are our, uh, some of our infinitive words. And uh, a lot of times the, the words that end in ETV um, are, are infinitive, but not always. So, uh, let me go ahead and play this one for you so you can hear it. Practice, put your you know, mics on mute, practice this, and then I will, we will uh, go over this for our, uh, our citizens. I did all right. Does anybody have any questions on the uh, Muscogee infinitive verbs? No? Okay. Mahaya? Yes, go ahead. I, I struggle with the, um, the H-U-E sound with, with the words. Um, could, could you repeat that again, please? I don't know why that I just, that's always a little harder for me than. We, we, we did a, we did a, is that we, we, we you, e, we, yeah. we did a, we did a, we did a, okay. Lido. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot, that's a sound we don't hear too often in English. So um, that's kind of new for our, our mouths and our brain to get wrapped around to go, say the word to go. Ayeda? Ayeda. Ayeda. Let's see if I can go back to. Here we go. All right, to go. And we put up to stand. Does anybody have any questions? All right. I had I had one. So okay. for is is there a reason why it's spelled with a V? Because it seems like it would be a yida, right? A yida. If it was Aida, 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 because A is the B sound. Aida, Aida. This is how it starts out. When you start conjugating, that's when it changes to an A. That's how I was taught. Like I I S. Uh huh. It's changed to an A, and that's what we're getting to. Right now is we're getting to try to make the simple sentences, and it shows you the rules of changing the U to an A. And um, uh, Miss uh, Coco is looking something up in the dictionary, but um, this is how I learned. I went through the college to learn Muscogee, and it was taught a little different than how the uh, first speakers have learned because they've learned hearing it, doing it, understanding without realizing that they're learning. It's just like, um, you know, you learn how to cook from your mom. You just know how to cook or you learn how to play guitar from your dad or your, your, your family. You just know how to do this. You don't realize that you're catching on and you're, they're teaching you. Um, so this is uh, one of the words that um, we are, not today, but we will go over and show how to conjugate it. Today, I'm going to give you the rules and show you the steps to con conjugate a sentence. And this is going to be hard <laughs> because this is all new to us and we're used to English. And okay, and you see on the, on the, yeah. You see right here, I've put the infinitive verbs on class two as well as class one. It still has the audio, so you can still hear them, the, uh, the way it's spoken. 
see right here, if you guys have access to this, this is where a lot of our Muskogee grammar comes from. Um, like I said, not everybody learns the same way. And those of you who who've taken or are taking Miss Barnett's class, Mahaya Barnett's class, you can see that things are not always this way or that way. Sometimes you learn one way and then, and then somebody else shows you another way. Um, we were talking about that yesterday is uh, some people say Doa and some people say uh, Owa with the T attached to the previous um, word. And neither one of them are incorrect. It's just that's just the way that people speak. And it could be dialect too. Could be dialect, you know, just, it's one of those things you just, you, you can hear it. You, you hear it's a little different from how you do it, but you know what they're saying. So okay. in the dictionary, it's V Y E T V to go. But it's, I mean, it sounds like an A, but it's, they've got it in here spelled with a V. Maybe it's supposed to be a yida instead of a yida. A yida. Uh -huh. Like uh, you know, when we uh, do our our um, sounds, uh, mm -hmm. ayeda, ayeda, ayeda. All right, did that answer your question? Um, let me go ahead. So this is where a lot of our grammar is, and I'm going to tell you just offhand, it's a hard read. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very hard. This is what Miss Coco was looking up the word for to go, ayeda, and. Uh, she said, but okay. All right, so this is another good um, dictionary to look in to um, see some of the um, rules or, you know, some of the uh, changes in the language like Ayida. I know I-I-A-S mm -hmm. is Ayida to go, but it's conjugated out. So it changes the V to an A. Like I said, it's gonna be a little hard. It's gonna be a little difficult. We're gonna try to go a little a little at a time to help you guys understand how to get from humbus, humbida to humbus. All right. So I know you're gonna have a lot of questions and sometimes I'm gonna to have to write down your questions because I don't know everything and I have to look it up as well. So right now we are going to do present tense simple sentences. So we're gonna conjugate in present tense. What's happening now? Uh, there's different conjugations, I'm going to, or I went, those are, was it future and past? Right now we're doing present. And uh, right here it says the present tense steps, like on Humbida, is to drop the ETV. And this is where you get into some gray territory where some people understand it and one, some people don't. I know the, the speakers, they don't realize, they already know this. They already know this, but they don't have to have it written out. So when you sit there and you, you tell the first speaker, this is how I learned, they just look at you all confused. But this is how I learned. <laughs> and uh, like I said, a lot of the references are the two books I just showed you, the uh, Creek um, sentence structure and the dictionary. So number two is L grade, the verb stem. I will show you this. So we'll just save the questions until we, after we go through this. L grade the verb stem, lengthen the final vowel of the verb stem. If the final vowel is a V, change it to an A. That's where you get to Ayida. It starts with a V and it changes to an A. And we'll get to that one later, but I'm just gonna show you the basics today. Okay. So you, uh, the final vowel is, if the final vowel is a V, change it to an A unless, it is followed by M, K, N, K, or T. If it is, you leave it a V. Like I said, I know it's going to be a lot. You just listen. Okay. The rest of the final vowels place a long mark over it. Okay. And number three, add the person marker. I, which is, you know, you, you know, me, and it is you. And this, this mark that we have right here, is for uh, he, she, it, or they, which is a single person. Like I can say, uh, yeah, I can say they and talk about Coco. They, you know, they cook the grape dumplings. Bufka Aki. 
but we're not getting to that this week. We're just going to stick right here this week, the eye marker. But these are the markers in, in Muskogee. I, it's, and nothing. And number four, add the declarative ending S or ES. Okay, and this is on the Google Drive. So you can write your notes now, or you can print this off and then write your notes on it. But this recording will be available to go over again if you need to in, in the future. Present tense conjugation. You drop the ETB to get the verb stem. Step two, you L grade. We're still repeating. We're trying to make sure that you understand this. And I'll show you where it makes more sense when I when I um, put everything in order. And then I've got it color coded too. Okay, L grade the verb stem. Lengthen the final vowel of the verb stem. If the final vowel is a V, change it to an A unless it's followed by MK, NKT, or if it, if it is, you leave it a V. If there's a word and there's an MK, N, K, or T, before the V, you leave it a V. The rest of the long vowels get a mark over it. L in L grade, L grade means lengthen. So you lengthen the final vowel of the verb stem. L grade is showing the tense. The M, V, M through L grade turns into M, A, M. So if you've got a word and it's got M, V, M, you turn the V into an A. And so that's where you get M, A, M. The final vowel of the last vowel in the in the the final vowel in the last vowel in the verb stem could be like the like it shows above M V M and you would turn it to M A N. The final vowel can also be the only vowel in the verb stem, and this is a lot of rules I know, and it gets kind of uh, gets kind of kind of hard. But this is where your notes and you know going over these things again will help you and practicing. I'm not going to tell you you got homework. I'm just telling you this is what you need to do repetition to learn the language. Um, I know when I was going to school for this, I would sit up uh, two or three hours and conjugate everything, every every um, infinitive verb that we had at the time, because I didn't want to be the oldest one in the class, which I was, that didn't know what was going on. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be that person. Oh, she doesn't know because she's old. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. I was sitting up doing my work, trying to make sure I caught up with her, stayed up with all the new guys. You know, when, when you're older, it's not that you can't do it. It's just you've got a lot of stuff you've already learned over your years. So it gets kind of jumbled up in your in your mind files. So you have to like start a new folder and put this stuff in there. And there's really no reason you can't do this. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, it's just how motivated you're to, you are to do this. Whether you're going to sit there and take it upon yourself to practice and try this. And try not to be the, that student in class where you're like, I don't know. <laughs> All right, this stuff is fun, actually. These are just the singular first, second, and third, right? Right, I'm not doing plural or present yet. This is the six-week module where we're just doing the basic, basic sentences. Um, because there's a lot to learn. And it's a lifetime to learn. But we're just trying to break it down to where you get the very basics and you can build on each basics. All right. And I think I left right here, off right here. Oh, goodness. My little board is being a little cranky. B becomes an A unless it's followed the MK, NK, or T, and all the other vowels will be linked by adding the long mark over the final vowel, A, I, O, E. And I know uh, Mahaya Barnett would be like, ah, A, O, E. So just, uh, I, I do know my, my sounds. I just need to practice as well. Add the person marker, I, is or zero. Person marker shows who is doing the action. I or A is the first person marker. It means I, yourself. I am doing this. It is the second person marker. It means you. The third person does not have a marker, so it's represented by this symbol right here. All right. And like I said, this week, we're only doing first person. Next week, we will go to second person. And the following week will be third person. And the last week, we're going to put it all together, and you can do one, two, or three. And I asked you guys to 
to practice this and write. And so we can uh, interact and you can share your, your, um, your sentence. It's not that we want to see who's doing their homework or who's doing something wrong. It's just we're trying to learn and we're just trying to gently nudge everybody. Okay, there's, so there's no person marker for the third person. Um, if you know that there's not an I or an it, you know it's the third person. It's kind of like the situational. Well, there's no I, there's no you. So it's he, she, they, or it, you know, as a singular person. Third person translated to literal English would be he, she, he, they in the singular. And you can also put a comma it, because you can be talking about a dog, a cat, a tree, or something. It doesn't have to be a person. They can mean one or more. So if you use they, put in parentheses, S and G, so you know it's singular. Since we are making singular sentences to form these sentences. Number four, add the declarative ending S or ES. These declarative endings are the periods. And this is one thing that I kept getting dinged for in class is I would forget to put the period on my sentence. How, how uh, important that is. You know, in Muskogee, I'm not sure, but this is what we were taught in the classroom. And the, and, uh, the ES and ES also mean am, are, or is. All right, so this is, uh, this is the first set of notes. Does anybody have any questions right now? Because let me go to the next one, which should make it a little bit easier to see. And we might finish a little earlier, but it just depends on if you guys have a lot of questions. I wanted to, to give you at least 30 minutes of going over this. So you see um, how you get from humbeda to humbis step by step. So the first person, like I said, we're doing the first person. Okay. Don't ask me why I said it's to eat -o. <laughs> At there at the top, home, but it means to eat. I don't know where that O came from. <laughs> you know how um, you'll be typing something up and something just happens to hit the wrong one. Home, but it means to eat. You can cross out this part right here, the little O at the end. It doesn't belong there. Humbida to eat. Humbida to eat. I think I fat fingered it. Okay, send the Google link. All right, let's try that. So while you guys are looking at that, I'm going to try to send the Google link here. Mado for that. I, I only have an iPad, so when I open it, the spot that it's at, it doesn't add to it. All right. um, so I appreciate your doing that. Well, I am, like I said, I'm learning this. So we're trying to figure this out. You know, technology is, is awesome when it works right or when I can work. <laughs> so here we go. Let's try it again. I've also been able to find the folder under the uh, shared with me section on drive. Okay. That's been helpful when All I don't right. have the direct link. Right, okay. All right, this one's trying to paste. Okay, there we go. Woo! It's been a little cranky. Thanks, there we go. All right, there, that should be the, that should be the drive. It's where all of these are in. So you see, um, I don't have a printout of it, but right here, this goes along with our steps, humbada to eat, and it shows you the arrow drop down, drop the ETV and creates the verb stem. So the verb stem would be H O M P. That's the verb stem of humbada. And you go, you see, you go down, and O is the final vowel. And you look at your your uh, your notes where it says you know to put a long mark over the O, and that lengthens the the final vowel. That's why I've got the O right here with the uh, um, the long mark over the final vowel, and it shows you right here on in the blue to add the person marker. Since we're talking about I, we put the I there. And you can see where you, you're starting to change the word. Um, I don't have printed in front of me my, um, my steps, 
But like I said, I just made this to help you guys understand what the rules were and you can go step by step. So you, you see right here, you add the person marker. Since we're talking about I this, this week, we're adding the I. Next week we'll do you, which will be it's. And then the following week, it'll be nothing, which will be he, she, it, or they. And then right here, it says add the declarative marker. And you see the S. Since it's got the I, you don't put the ES, you put the S. Because you can either put S or ES uh, according to the rules. But since it's uh, it's got an I there, you just put an S. Add the declarative marker. And this, this one little uh, S means R am, are, or is. And it also means the period, period at the end of the sentence from what I was told um, in class. So you can see the verb stem, which is hombes or home. And then you see the person marker I, and you see that it starts right here at the top. And I made the, uh, the arrows to see the I marker. I'm trying to show you every little piece of this word and what it means. And you see the S, which you've added up here at the top, is in green, and that's the declarative any meaning am, are, is. Um, it can also mean they, and it also means the period. So you went right here from all the steps on the previous slide, following down, you went from home beda to home base. I'm eating. Does anybody have any questions on this? I know it's gonna take you guys a little time to print this out, look it over, go step by step, and then you might come up with questions, which is, is awesome. Just you know, write them down so we can address it in the next class. Right now, it's a lot to take in, a lot, and it's different from English. So it's like your brain has to just, I, I always say marinate. You have to marinate on the new information you have, and sometimes then it'll just click. Um, I have a question. Okay. Um, so when the when you say it, when you say the O is the final um, vowel or something like that, what is that like? How does that change the sound? Does it change the sound or? I, usually, um, with a line over, it's a long sound. But mm -hmm. I because I did come up with that question earlier. I'll have to ask one of the other Mahayas. But usually with a, a long line on, over it, it means it's the long sound of, of that uh, specific um, um, letter. Like I said, I, I, this is how I was taught. I'm still learning it. I'll ask the speakers and, and uh, I'll ask um, Mahaya Eli. She's really good at, at, uh, at sentence structure. But I'll, I'll put that in our next chat. In the... Martin Grammar book he showed in its section paradigms. It has keys any for the third person plural that doesn't apply. We're not talking about plural right now. We're talking about singular. This is just, these are just rules for singular right now. We can't get into everything at once. We're just trying to take, take it a little step by step. I think the long side is simply a lengthening sound to add emphasis. Okay. And that's, that's home, back, home base. Home base. It, I'll, I'll ask, like I said, uh, Mahaya Eli for clarification, but um, um, I will put that in our, our next class, our next chat, um, what I find out about that. Because, um, okay, somebody says, okay, thanks, sorry. Yeah, we're, like I said, we're starting at present, what we're doing now. We're not doing the future yet. We're not doing the past because. This is the easiest place that I understand to start at, what we're doing now. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, like I said, you're gonna have to look at this. Uh, I was gonna say off duty. We're gonna look at, have to look at this in your own time. And I know, I know, <laughs> off duty. But um, look at this in your own time. Look at the two notes, uh, the, uh, the simple sentence present tense, uh, number one, look at this, print it out, or at least have it on the same screen and go step by step with this over here. That'll help you learn a little bit easier and it'll help you kind of clarify what's going on. Because I know right now it's a lot of, I don't understand, I'm lost. Oh my gosh, this is too much. I'm not going to learn this. I've been there. 
<laughs> I remember going into class thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I'm, I'm over 50 years old. How am I? Just, you know, just stop that. You can do it. You will do it. Just do it a little step at a time because um, you can learn anything. You can do anything. You have no limits except yourself. And uh, I've gotten past that point to where I'm, I'm limiting myself. I'm just doing. <laughs> My kids always say, Mom, how'd you get that done? Well, I just did it. I didn't ask questions. I didn't ask, you know, how do I do this? I just did it. And that's what we need to do in our language is just do it. You meant they is gender neutral, neutral singular. It was like, um, well, like Coco, uh, you know, say she's over there cooking and I'm talking to you and say, or, you know, there's a, you know, she's sitting there, well, they did it. <laughs> they did this, you know, and you're, you're picking it up. It's singular, still Coco, only Coco, but they, they did this. You know, it's not talking about a group, it's talking about a singular still. It's not really a, a gender, it's just they, or, you know, it. You know, there's a dog that, you know, dropped the bone, took off running. Well, it, it dropped the bone. It's still one dog. We're still just simple, simple sentence, present tense, singular right now. I know would somebody that, got, go ahead. Would that be like, what is the other classrooms, ma, ma, like that? Is it, or am I, I'm confusing uh, that, aren't I? I think you're confusing that. Um, <laughs> And I understand what you're saying, and I. But um, right now we're just doing the simple sentences. I think when uh, Mahaya Becky does stuff, she does it more advanced than what we're learning right now. Uh, also, another question to Mahaya: um, because the S is like the end of a sentence, do you still put a period at the end of that, or is it just standalone? This, yeah, I forgot to put. <laughs> Not a criticism. I didn't mean it that no, way. No, no, no. I, and I meant to do that. It's just um, when I do these things, I like to color code. And sometimes when you're concentrating on the color, I forgot to put the period. But that's why if you see on here on this mark, it says also means period, end of sentence. And I got a big period. It's to remind myself to put a period and I forgot. But yes, oh, bless. there should be a period there from what I understand because this is a whole sentence, home base. I am cooking. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. And this will help you a little bit more. So this is uh, this is your verb stem eating, and you can see where the I lines up. I, and you can see where the S what what the S literally means. I am, and that's the translations for the Muskogee word home home base home base uh, for the Muskogee word. That's the whole sentence. The literal translation for home base, eating I am. And you can see that right here, eating I am. So when you see this, you now know what each part of this word means. And this, to me, that's exciting because it's like any other, I mean, a lot of other uh, languages, oh, it's just a word. No, actually, this is a sentence. This is Muskogee sentence. This is how we differ. You know, it looks like one word, you just change, like you drop the ETV, so humbida. you drop the ETV, you add the I, eating I, you add the S, M, eating I am. And then, like I said, you see right here, the Muskogee word. So you went from humbida to this word. The literal translation is eating I am. And then the English translation is I am eating. So it's, it's, to me, it's exciting to see eating I am going from, you think it's just one word, it's a whole sentence. And you can see the breakdown in translations. And uh, I'm pretty sure I said this in this class, but um, we always talk about Yoda and I've got a picture of Yoda over here because I always say that Yoda's Muskogee. <laughs> Let me see if I can take this off and show you guys. There's Yoda. <laughs> but uh, we always talk about how, uh, you know, Muskogee is not wrong, it's just different. So if you think about how Yoda speaks, he speaks in the Muskogee, uh, the Muskogee way of, of speaking. 
Uh, Yoda am I? Yeah. All right. So I know that's a lot to take in today. I didn't do, um, I didn't want to overwhelm you guys. I also put in the classroom right here, the infinitives. And these are not all of the infinitives in the Muscogee language. These are just a short few that we're going to use um, for our next classes to make the sentences. Um, I can show you how to break down Ayida to go, and I will put it on uh, color coded so you can see how it breaks down. But I will show you that one because I know that one's difficult because you do change the V to an A. And now it makes sense. It's, it's almost like you get a, a part of the puzzle here, part of the puzzle there. And then later on, it's like, oh my gosh, this makes sense now because Mahaya Barnett showed you this piece. I showed you another piece. Mahaya Coco showed you that piece and you're sitting there and you're like, oh. it makes sense. And it just kind of comes to you when you're not expecting it sometime. I'll be driving or I'll be shopping and I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. And my daughter's like, what are you doing? And I was like, it just hit me what, what, what I was learning. It just makes sense to go will probably be in a regular verb. Hmm. All right. Well, like I said, I will break that down and I will look, I will ask the Mahayas the question and I will get back with you on our next class. Does anybody have any questions right now? I know that's a lot to digest. Here are the grammar books. Like I said, this one is a good book, but it's a lot of, if you're not a linguist, it's really hard. <laughs> and I've read over it and read over it and read over it. And it's good to know some of these things, but this is where it's the concepts that, um, that I'm teaching you. It's, it's in there. And it's also in the, uh, the dictionary, the Creek dictionary as well. Um, it's, it's good to just look at these and read it. Just, you know, um, like I said, it'll come to you on what's going on. The more common use, the more irregular. Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, I yes, Mahaya, I had one. Okay, go ahead. Um, is there, are there different tenses for uh, present versus present progressive? So like I eat versus I am eating. Is there a differentiation between those or are they kind of lumped into one group? It's lumped into one group because, um, let's see. Well, thanks. I'm glad somebody likes the color coding. <laughs> I, I love color. I'll sit there and and I'll color code it. a lot of different things just to help me remember. Let's see, but let me see if I can go back to this. Because that's one. Because you can also put, okay, we're on the class too. You can also put I'm eating instead of, well, yeah. So when you translate this, you can translate it to English, I am eating or I'm eating. It doesn't have to be I am, it could be I'm eating. So there's no different way to, to, to get to that I'm eating and you can just shorten it. The, the difference would be in the eating. So it would be eat versus eating. Uh, the present progressive is more a like temporary, it's currently happening. And then the Progressive would be the general kind of more permanent, like I eat grapes as a general would be the progress, it would be the just present. And then I am eating grapes kind of implies like right now I'm eating grapes. Mm -hmm. I am eating versus I eat grapes. I eat, yeah. I think that would be a different sentence. Okay, so there is different tenses for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mado. That's one of the things I'm trying to learn is the differences. But um, like I said, this is the basic, basic way to, to write a sentence. And in order to go forward, you have to learn the basics to start building onto that. All right. But oh, I like the color coding. It helps it, it helps me to learn. It helps, you know, to follow down, you know, what's, what's going on, eating I am. And uh, like I said, there's the little translation. So whenever... Whenever um, you guys look at this and you guys go through the uh, go through the words, then uh, you can practice by just using your notes. And um, next week, I'm going to ask you guys to to take um, about three different infinitive verbs, and I'm going to ask you to um, go by the steps and break it down. And I'm not just going to ask you to share one. 
share one with the class and it's not like we're trying to judge or anything but um you know it helps you learn as well because sometimes when you share things you don't realize you have a question until you share it well oh wow that doesn't make sense or you know hey now i got a question on that but uh all right that's all i have for you today like i said it's a lot to digest i don't want to bombard you with new information and you're just like after you click in, you know, we're out of the meeting, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm fried. I don't want you to get like that because I've gotten like that before and I know how it feels and you just sit there and you feel drained, but you're like, I learned something. I just don't remember what I learned. So just marinate on this and then go over it. I have the broken down um, parts for you guys to reference. And at the end of that one, it should have a period. I forgot to put the period, <laughs> but I will put it on there. And does anybody have any questions? Are all of these um, um, PowerPoints that I'm putting together with the speakers, is that helping you guys? Um, is there anything else that you can think of that would help me to help you to remember or, or anything like that? Do you guys have any comments or you know suggestions right now? Because we're trying to figure out how to help you guys the best way you guys can learn. You know, not just one way, but you know, different ways to do it. Anybody questions, comments, or suggestions, or is everything working pretty good on, on the on the Google Drives? All right. Okay. Well, just like I said, just go through that, marinate on it, you know, reference, go back and practice your sounds, and um, I will see you next time. All right. Kadam Chicha, please. Mado, Mado for coming. Let's stay. <laughs> <laughs>